The concept of generalized functions or distribution is uh, very useful in image analysis and signal analysis. Um, unfortunately, this is not really treated in our functional analysis uh, lectures. So I will give you a very short and definitely insufficient introduction, which does, just gives some uh, basic ideas. And um, if you want to know something more, there's the book by Rudin, and I'm more or less following his view on distributions. And uh, if you're even more interested, there's the book by Laurent Schwartz. I think it's called Distributions. And uh, that's the basic reference for, for all the, of these things. Okay, so to fix idea, I assume that omega is an open set in Rn, non-trivial. And usually we'll use something like omega equals to r to the n. Now, um, assume that d of omega is the space of all functions on omega with compact support that are infinitely many times differentiable. And we view this space as a, a topological space, space of test functions. And uh, we define convergence in uh, that uh, in that set by the following. So if, if, um, a series phi, phi k converges to some phi if and only if. Uh, first of all, I mean, the phi k's are in D of omega. So uh, that means they all have compact support. And uh, we require that that support doesn't spread out to infinity. So we require that there's a compact set where all these single supports are um, member of, uh, contained in. OK, so and the second thing, of course, we require that phi k uh, converges to phi. Um, so um, yeah, um, but not only phi k, but all, all uh, phi k and all of its derivatives converge to each other. Uh, just all of the derivatives of phi k converge to all of the derivatives of phi. And uh, we even re require that uh, this uh, convergence is uniform on omega. Now, this is a very, very strong convergence, right? I mean, we, we have a uniform convergence over here, not only of the function, but of all of its derivatives. Um, so this is very strong, a very strong uh, convergence we have. Um, let me first uh, remark that d of omega is non-empty. I mean, this is uh, it contains um, functions with compact support that are infinitely many times differentiable. It's not completely clear that these functions exist. But uh, an example is the function e to the minus 1 over 1 minus norm x squared for norm x uh, smaller than 1, where if norm x goes to 1, then uh, this becomes minus infinity, so it decays very, very small, very, very fast uh, for norm x going to 1. And so if you define it at 0 outside, then this is a function with compact support, and it's really differentiable at minus 1 uh, um, on the border uh, for norm x uh, equals 1. So uh, generally, it, it looks something like this, right, here uh, in, in, uh, for n equals 1. And it goes to zero very, very fast over here, so that it's actually differentiable infinitely many times. OK, uh, we define the space of distributions on the space of test functions as d of omega prime as um, all the linear fun uh, continuous linear functionals on d of omega. So it contains all the functions t that take an argument in d of omega and give some um, um, and um, give a real number. Yes, OK. And these should be continuous and linear. OK. Um, and um, yeah, so what, what does uh, continuity in that case mean? Well, it of course means that if phi n converges to phi in this uh, strong convergence, then we require that then we require that t of phi n converges to 
property of phi. Okay, uh, again, we view this as a topological space, but uh, this time we have a very, very weak conv convergence. We take pointwise convergence. So a sequence of type uh, t tk in d of omega prime converges to some t if and only if tk of phi converges to t of phi for all phi in d of omega. Okay, uh, but um, I mean phi is um, so um, phi should be in d of omega. So tk of uh, phi that makes sense because tk is in d of omega prime. So this is a real number, and that could should converge to this real number. Oh, by the way, I'm talking about real numbers. You could easily exchange that for complex, but uh, I'll stay with you at this point. Okay, um, now. Um, Let's take some examples, and uh, the probably most important examples we get for local L1 functions. So we define the localized L1 functions on um, on some set omega, and again, I always think of omega as the whole space. Uh, the set of all functions from omega to R, which are in L1 of K for all compact subsets of omega. Um, now, what does that mean? Uh, the easiest thing is uh, set omega equal to R1 uh, to uh, Rn and uh, take the constant function. So take the constant function one. Then uh, that function is definitely not in L1 of omega because it doesn't even go to zero uh, at infinity. Uh, however, uh, it's in L1 of K for any compact set K, because on a compact set, the one uh, function, the constant function one is of course integrable. So and its value is smaller than infinity. So uh, definitely that's in L1 log, but it's not in L1. And you can do the same thing, of course, for all continuous functions. So all continuous functions are obviously in L1 log, independent of whether they go to infinity, uh, go to zero at infinity or not. Okay, uh, now let's define the function tf uh, in d of omega prime. Well, let's first define it as a function from d of omega uh, to r. And um, so I define tf of phi as integral over omega f of x phi of x dx. And of course, phi is now in d of omega. Now, is that uh, well defined if uh, f is in L1 log? Um, yes, it is, because uh, this the integral over here is an integral over omega. But uh, since the support of, uh, since phi is in d of omega, that means that its support is compact. And uh, we can replace the integral over here by an re uh, integral over k, the compact set where phi has its support. And uh, so further, since um, the since phi is continuous and only defined on a compact set, uh, it has support on a compact set. That means that its absolute value is limited by some constant c. So uh, this can be um, so this integral over here can be estimated as smaller. The absolute value of this is smaller than c times the integral over k f of x dx. And since uh, f is in L1 of k, that's smaller than infinity. So in, in fact, this is smaller than infinity and it's well defined. Okay, good. Um, now um, let's, uh, yeah, now um, it's well defined. Obviously it's linear in phi, right? I mean, if you look at this, that's clear. And uh, now we need to show that it's continuous. So what we have to show, we have to show that if phi n converges to phi, then uh, tf of phi n converges to tf of phi. First of all, if phi n converges to phi, that means that there is a big compact set k that contains all the supports of the phi case over here. So that was part of our definition of convergence. Okay, so now let's look at tf of phi n. Uh, this is the integral of omega f of x phi uh, n of x dx according to our definition of tf. Now, um, 
Again, uh, since the support of phi n is uh, contained in k, we have that this is the integral over k f of x phi n of x dx. And um, it's even uniform convergence. So if it's uniform convergence, then this integral over here converges to the integral over k f of x phi of x dx. That's analysis two, I think so. And uh, this, of course, is nothing but tf of phi. So um, in fact, uh, tf phi of phi n converges to tf of phi, and uh, that means that tf is continuous. And now it's continuous. It's well-defined, linear, and continuous. So it's in D of omega prime. OK. Um, in the following, and this is an important remark, I will always identify f with that distribution tf. So um, when I have a function f, there, there is that function tf associated with this. And um, I will often denote this with uh, this relation with the same, um, with the same parameters, right? And so we want to identify f with tf. If I do that, then in this, in this sense, L1 log is a subset of D of omega prime because every uh, function f in L1 log defines that tf, which is then in D of omega prime. OK, uh, so that was one example. The second example, which is probably the most well-known distribution and um, maybe at least as important as the first one, uh, we define t of phi as phi of zero. So we evaluate that function at zero. And that is also called the delta or Dirac distribution. Now let's check that. Uh, obviously, that's a function from, um, uh, from d of omega to the real numbers. So uh, that makes sense. It is in. Um, uh, it, it's in the real space. Now uh, let's check, is it linear? Well, of course it's linear, right? I'm, I'm not checking this, but is it also continuous? Um, let's assume that phi n converges to phi, then uh, at least um, we have that phi n of, um, so that means that uh, phi n converges, um, phi n converges to phi. So that means that all derivatives of phi n uh, converge uh, to all the derivatives of phi. And in particular, we have that t of phi n, which is phi n of null, converges to phi of phi of zero, I should say, is phi of zero. Uh, and it, this converges to phi of zero, so d is in fact continuous. OK, good. Um, are we now extending? tend in our notion of uh, functions or is that, uh, I mean, if, if we um, view this over here, L1 log was contained in uh, D of omega prime, can that delta function or, or that, that delta distribution, can it also be represented in this way as a function? And uh, the answer, of course, is no, right? I mean, there is no function f such that phi of zero is the integral over f of x phi of x dx. Um, but we can at least approximate it. And um, um, we can do that in the following way. Um, assume that we have a sequence of box functions. So this would be f1. And uh, assume that uh, the, uh, the support gets smaller and smaller and gets concentrated around zero. Uh, this should be zero. Gets concentrated around zero. But the integral is always one. So that uh, it gets the support gets smaller, but the function itself gets bigger. OK. Um, now, we have that uh, for these fk, we have that tfk of phi is defined as the integral over fk of x, phi of x dx. And if the support gets smaller and smaller, and if the integral is 1, that means that this will converge to phi of 0. So, uh, And this is, of course, delta of phi. So in a sense, these tfk of phi converge to delta of phi. Um, but the fk's do not converge, right? 
But um, in a way, we can think of the delta distribution. If we want to think, think of it as a function, then it, uh, it is a kind of function that goes to zero, every, that is zero everywhere outside of, uh, outside of zero, because locally, I mean, that, uh, that these functions fk converge pointwise to zero, and they converge to infinity at zero, and the integral over the limit is one. So um, we might think of the delta distribution as exactly this function over here with, with uh, infinity included. So we might think of the delta distribution in function terms as a function that is infinite at zero and zero everywhere outside. Okay, in, that, in the sense that I just uh, mentioned. Now, in the same way, uh, define uh, um, t alpha or uh, t alpha and x square of phi as uh, d to the alpha phi evaluated at uh, x bar. And uh, this is again a distribution by the same reason as above, so I'm not going into detail about that. Also, let m a manifold then uh, we, uh, if we define tm of phi as the integral over m phi of x d sigma of x, then uh, this is also a distribution. So um, you can easily show all the properties. Um, mainly what's behind it is um, you have compact support for phi, you have con uniform convergence, and then everything just follows. Okay, good. Um, now, what we would like to do is we would like to define the Fourier transform and the derivative uh, for, for distributions. Now, think of what we've done. We've started with L1 log functions. We've extended that space of L1 log functions in a, in a sense. And now we want to do everything with these distributions, what we did with functions. Before, so we would like to define Fourier transforms for, for for these distributions. We would like to define derivatives, convolutions, and so on. And uh, now here's the way to do that. And I will start with the derivative. Now, since we identify um, T F by F in a way, we would like to do the like to do the following thing. I mean, when I defined when I define the um, the derivative of the distribution T F. Now, since the we uh, we identify this over here with F, this should be the same as the um, as the first as the derivative of F, right? Um, now, but if we take the first derivative of F and again view the corresponding distribution for that, then that would be T F prime. So if we define the derivative of a distribution, if we want to define it in any reasonable way, then there's at least it has to satisfy that T F prime, the definition that we use, should be the same as T F prime. Okay, good. So, um, Let's see what that means. Let's take any test function phi, and let's apply. So I have TF prime of F phi. We saw that there's only one reasonable way of defining this. is It must be TF prime of phi. And uh, that's the integral F prime of x phi of x dx. Now, um, with... Um, I lost the word for a second. With partial integration, uh, we have that um, this is the integral f of x phi prime of x dx. And uh, since um, phi goes to zero at the boundaries of omega, um, this uh, there's no boundary term over here. So this is minus integral f of x phi prime of x dx. So, and this is nothing but minus tf of phi prime. Okay, so, and, and um, uh, consider that uh, phi is in C infinity, so that uh, phi prime over here exists. And uh, of course, it's, um, it's also, again, um, it also has compact support. Phi prime is still infinitely many uh, times differentiable. So this all we have here is absolutely well defined. So um, there's only one way of defining the derivative. Uh, what we have to do is we have to define t prime of phi as minus t of phi prime. 
right? I mean, that's there's no other way uh, of doing this. Okay, um, in doing this in a reasonable way. Now, the funny thing is, this is always defined, right? As I just said. So that means that the derivative of distribution is always defined. Everything is differentiable. All distributions are differentiable. And we've defined it in such a way that for f weakly differentiable, we have that tf prime is tf prime. Okay, uh, so, but what if f is not even weakly differentiable? I mean, uh, if we take some function that's not even weakly differentiable, then what comes out? I mean, what, what would be the corresponding function that uh, would be given as the derivative to us? So um, let's take as an example, omega equals to r, and let's consider the function f of x equal to uh, sine of x. So one for positive x and minus one for negative x. Now uh, we take tf and the derivative of phi, which is defined as minus tf of phi prime. Now that would be minus the integral over r f of x phi prime of x dx. Now inserting the definition of f, f is minus one on uh, on the integral from minus infinity to zero. So this is the integral minus infinity to zero phi prime of x dx minus integral zero to infinity phi prime of x dx. And uh, now taking uh, the uh, integrating function, that's phi. Uh, we again use that phi of minus infinity is zero because phi has compact support. Also phi uh, vanishes here at infinity. So what we have is uh, two times phi of zero. This is phi of zero and this is again phi of zero uh, and uh, the boundary terms at infinity vanish. Okay, so the derivative is twice phi of zero and uh, that's twice the delta distribution of phi. Okay, now, now we see what happens when we uh, try to differentiate uh, in distributional terms a function that is not even weakly, distribution, uh, weakly differentiable. We get out a function that is not representable in that form tf which, or tg which we, which we had up there, right? So if we have a function that's not weakly differentiable, then taking the distributional derivative gives a real distribution and not some function that can be represented by another L1 log function. Okay, um, but we should note something. We extend here the definition of differentiability beyond weakness. So we have now a, different, a notion of differentiability for all, for all L1 log functions, for all distributions, but, all, but now even for L1, um, but uh, in, in particular for L1 log functions. And uh, that means we've really, we really have a broader sense of differentiability now. Okay, um, let me stop here and tell you something about convolutions and Fourier transform in a second. <laughs>